Hey, let's do something special for Grandpa's birthday. I suggested. Great idea. Let's make Grandpa's favorite beef stew and celebrate together. I replied with a smile, agreeing to my granddaughter's proposal. Over the next few days, in preparation for my husband Robert's upcoming birthday, Emma, who had apparently never cooked before, held the knife with trembling hands. I couldn't help but feel tempted to intervene. However, I continued to watch her intently. Children learn quickly, and within just a few days, Emma became proficient enough to cut things to an appropriate size with the knife. And finally, the long-awaited day of Robert's birthday arrived. Emma had spent a considerable amount of time preparing the beef stew. When I asked Robert to taste the beef stew that Emma had spent a long time preparing, he happily took a bite, his expression filled with joy. He tilted his head slightly, then calmly stood up, carrying the bowl toward the kitchen sink. I watched curiously, furrowing my brow as he approached the disposal unit. After a brief pause, Robert returned. I couldn't help but express my frustration. Robert, she spent five hours making that beef stew. Why did you dispose of it? Apologize. I made a slightly sulky remark, but deep down, I was genuinely angry. Even if there were some complaints about the taste, was it really necessary to throw it away? A little extra seasoning adjustment could have easily fixed it. Robert looked at me, surprise evident on his face. Did you eat any of this? Huh? No, I didn't. I replied, puzzled. Quietly, Emma stepped closer to Robert and whispered in the tiniest voice. Thank you, Grandpa. I sat there, genuinely bewildered as Robert softened his expression, nodding slightly. My name is Nancy, and I'm 54 years old. I live with my kind but somewhat timid husband, Robert, and a recently adopted kitten. I manage a locally beloved beauty salon that I inherited from my parents. The salon thrives due to its prime location and the support of our community. Our beauty salon doubles as our home. We use the first floor for the salon and the second floor as our living space. Lately, I've been reconsidering keeping the kitten confined to a cage on the second floor while I work. Whenever I hear faint noises from upstairs, I wonder if it's unfair to keep the kitten locked up. A few days after adopting the kitten, I decided to let it roam freely in the living room. As I checked on it during breaks from work, I was consistently surprised by its unexpected behavior, knocking over vases, nibbling on clothes, and more. As a hairstylist, I take pride in my technical skills, always serving clients with a smile and providing the best haircuts based on their preferences. Word of mouth has spread about our salon, attracting new customers. To avoid becoming complacent, I regularly attend seminars and workshops to enhance my hairstyling abilities. Balancing work and family time is essential to me. My husband, Robert, and I have supported each other without major arguments since our marriage. Despite Robert being two years older, I admit I lean on him quite a bit. As a hairstylist, I'm confident in my technical skills but managing various salon inventory items like shampoos has never been my strong suit. I've left that task to Robert. He's efficient in handling phone reservations, and he even set up online booking, which I believe has contributed to attracting new clients. Robert has a gentle personality, albeit a bit timid. When I fell in love with an American shorthair kitten at the animal shelter and pleaded to adopt it, he hesitated but eventually agreed. However, despite having a new kitten in the house, he avoids touching it. I'm not great with animals. He explains. Always from a safe distance, he observes the kitten. Well, even if he claims to be uncomfortable, I'm sure he'll warm up to our furry family member eventually. With that in mind, I didn't worry too much. 
I spontaneously named the kitten Lily. In our neighborhood, our son Michael, his wife Samantha, and our precious granddaughter Emma live harmoniously. Young Emma still clings to me, and every time she begs to spend more time with Grandma, I find myself struggling with my relationship with Samantha. Emma asks me to cut her hair once a month. When I suggest, why not have your mom do it? She responds with an innocent smile, loud enough for Samantha, who is nearby, to hear, Because Grandma is better at it. Although Samantha smiles, her eyes don't share the same amusement. As I examine Emma's finished haircut, Samantha murmurs, Indeed, you're quite skilled. The truth is, Samantha is also a hairstylist. While I look forward to bonding with my adorable granddaughter, I've been hesitant to cut Emma's hair, fearing it might hurt Samantha's pride as a mother. Yet Emma has grown even more attached to me, and she often wants to spend time together. Samantha and my son Michael both work full-time, so Emma ends up staying with us frequently. I temporarily closed the salon to prioritize walks, park visits, and quality time with Emma. However, Samantha's subtle disapproval continues to bother me. Although unspoken, I can tell she disapproves when Emma and I share moments. One day, I decided to address it directly with Samantha. Samantha, we're both hairstylists, and there's this unspoken rivalry, right? But since we're family, maybe we should try to get along? Samantha looked surprised for a moment, then smiled and replied. I'll reconsider. Maybe getting closer to Nancy could benefit Michael and Emma. Her words put me at ease. While I don't know what lies ahead for Samantha and me, I'm determined to cherish our family bonds. And as I wish for more joyful moments playing with Emma, I navigate the busy days ahead. One day, Michael's family visited my home. Our playful kitten, Lily, was chasing a toy with Michael and Emma. As they played, I sat nearby, pen in hand, jotting down notes in the cat care journal I've kept since Lily joined our family. Suddenly, I remembered that next Sunday is Robert's birthday. I motioned for Emma to come closer. Hey, let's do something special for Grandpa's birthday. How about hosting a fun party that's different from our usual celebrations? Emma looked a bit puzzled, but her eyes sparkled. That sounds great. Let's make Grandpa's favorite beef stew and celebrate together. She replied. I smiled, agreeing with Emma's proposal. Over the next few days, Emma learned how to make beef stew under my guidance. Although she'd never really cooked before, she tackled the challenge with determination. I handled the verbal instructions while Emma did all the chopping and simmering. As the days passed, Emma's knife skills improved remarkably. It's amazing how quickly kids learn and adapt. Finally, the eagerly awaited day arrived, Robert's birthday. I sent Robert out with a playful. Go somewhere until evening. I invited Michael's family over. When I asked Emma if it was okay for her to handle making the beef stew, Samantha, who was standing nearby, hugged Emma's shoulder and smiled. Actually, she has been eating beef stew almost every day until now. She's become quite obsessed with making it, and today, she wants to cook a stew with incredibly deep flavors by simmering it for a very long time. Oh, that's quite ambitious. Stirring the pot continuously to prevent burning is also a lengthy process. So, I'll be in the kitchen with Emma. Nancy, could you handle the decorations and maybe pick up the cake? I thought it was an excellent idea and nodded appreciatively. As I expressed my gratitude with a smile, I entrusted Emma and Samantha with the beef stew preparation. Meanwhile, I stepped out for the decorations and cake pickup. When I returned, the aroma of the beef stew filled the room. It smelled absolutely delicious. As I headed toward the kitchen, I noticed Emma standing alone, 
gazing at the beef stew pot. Something seemed off about her expression. Her eyes appeared slightly teary, and she looked nervous. Emma? What's wrong? Are you okay? I asked. After hesitating for a moment, Emma finally let the tears spill over. Grandma, I messed up the beef stew. I placed my hand on Emma's shoulder, surprised yet comforting. It's okay, Emma. Even if the beef stew doesn't turn out perfectly, everyone makes mistakes. What matters is celebrating Grandpa wholeheartedly. Emma's eyes welled up with tears. But Grandma, I'm sorry, but I think the beef stew won't taste good. I want something else today. What are you saying? It might not be a failure after all. How about this? Let Grandpa taste it, and if he likes it, we'll all enjoy it together. How does that sound? I suggested. Emma's delicate expression tugged at my heart. But from what I could see, the stew wasn't burnt, and the ingredients were properly cut. Where could it have gone wrong? Well, I was sure Emma would agree once Robert tasted it. As the sky outside turned reddish, Robert arrived home. Simultaneously, Emma and I seated Robert and explained the situation. Well, if I taste it and like it, then we'll all share it. Robert happily took a spoonful of the beef stew. He tilted his head slightly, then calmly stood up, carrying the bowl toward the kitchen sink. I watched curiously, furrowing my brow as he approached the disposal unit. After a brief pause, Robert returned. My expression now a mix of frustration and curiosity. Robert, Emma spent five hours making that beef stew. Why did you dispose of it? Apologize. Although my tone sounded a bit sulky, I was genuinely upset. Why would he throw it away when a simple adjustment, adding more seasoning, could have fixed any issues? Robert looked at me, surprise evident on his face. Did you eat any of this? Huh? No, I didn't. I replied, puzzled. Quietly, Emma stepped closer to Robert and whispered in the tiniest voice. Thank you, Grandpa. I sat there, genuinely bewildered, as Robert softened his expression, nodding slightly. I'm sorry, Nancy, the stew had nuts in it, and I know about your allergy. I didn't want to take any chances. Robert said, his smile gentle. His words left me momentarily stunned. I indeed had a severe nut allergy, especially when it came to food. Emma mentioned that she failed while making the beef stew, but I didn't taste it or adjust it due to my own allergy concerns. Throughout my life, I've been extremely cautious about nuts, avoiding any food that isn't explicitly nut-free. It's become a habit, and regardless of who prepares the food, family or otherwise, I unconsciously pay attention to potential allergens. When Robert and I dine out, he always tastes the food for me. He'll be the first to sample it, if there's any uncertainty about nuts. I had a painful experience once when a restaurant staff provided incorrect information about nuts, so Robert's vigilance has been a relief. My nut allergy is indeed severe. Of course, I've communicated this to my son, Michael, and his wife, Samantha. With a mix of surprise and frustration, I blurted out, Don't you remember I have a nut allergy? Why was it there? Although I wasn't addressing anyone in particular, Samantha spoke up. She seemed a bit flustered. I apologize, Nancy, maybe Emma accidentally added nuts because she loves them. She probably didn't know about your allergy. She patted Emma's shoulder as she spoke. The revelation that Emma liked nuts caught me off guard. While I hadn't specifically informed Emma about my allergy, 
We'd discussed her own dislike for nuts before. I remembered a time when she laughed, saying she was just like me because she didn't like nuts either. But I did tell Emma I disliked nuts. I said, my surprise and confusion evident. Samantha replied. Nancy, Emma loves nuts. It can't be helped. Thankfully, it didn't lead to a major incident. Emma's head hung low, her face a mix of sadness and remorse. I continued to gaze at Samantha, trying to understand what was happening. Had I overlooked some crucial detail? Michael sensed the tension and created an opportunity to revisit the conversation. Let's discuss this another time. Michael suggested, creating a diversion. After all, today was Robert's birthday. We wouldn't want to ruin the festive mood. Robert, gently stroking his chin, proposed. Let's check the surveillance camera. Samantha's expression shifted from surprise to a pale hue. Huh? She uttered. The security camera, installed recently for our new cat, seemed to hold an ominous significance for Samantha. Robert muttered. Usually, I only activate the camera while we're working at the salon, but today, I accidentally left it on. No worries, Robert. I'll make sure Emma understands her mistake about the nuts. We don't need to replay the camera. As an apology for discarding the beef stew that Emma had spent hours preparing, I thought it would be nice to witness the cooking scene she had worked so hard on. Robert said, his smile gentle, but his eyes serious. He then removed the SD card from the cat's surveillance camera and inserted it into the TV's video player. The footage clearly showed the kitchen scene where Samantha and Emma were cooking, their conversation audible due to the camera's audio recording feature. Samantha glanced around nervously, suggesting, Why don't we just go out for dinner if there's no food? Ignoring her, Robert increased the playback volume. Amidst the noise, Samantha's and Emma's voices emerged. Samantha's tone was firm. Hurry up! As Samantha handed Emma the nuts, the scene played out. I stared, perplexed. Emma's tearful expression revealed a mix of sadness and guilt. Emma shook her head, refusing to accept the nuts, and pushed them back towards Samantha's chest. In response, Samantha slapped Emma's cheek forcefully. Emma collapsed on the spot, and Samantha, humming to herself, meticulously crushed the nuts on the cutting board. With an evil grin, she continued, I'll simmer it well enough so that old hag won't notice. Emma's tearful voice pleaded, Stop it. Grandma might suffer. But Samantha looked down at Emma with an icy expression. If we reveal this, I might get arrested by the police. Are you okay with that? No, but... It's fine. I just wanted to play a little prank on Nancy. This will be our secret, Emma. Samantha winked, pointing her index finger in front of her face, while Emma stood there, stunned. As Samantha dropped the crushed nuts into the beef stew pot, she did this knowing full well that if I were to consume it, I would have a severe allergic reaction. Robert and I were both deeply shocked, staring at the footage. Michael's voice trembled as he asked. Why would you do something like this? Samantha, realizing that everything had been exposed, abandoned any pretense and crossed her arms, her expression sharp. You have it easy, don't you, Nancy? Running your own salon, working freely, chatting with familiar clients, you don't struggle like the rest of us. Her tone bitter. I exchanged glances with Robert and Michael, wondering what was going on. Samantha continued, venting about her work at the salon. The long hours of standing, insufficient breaks, and the policy of prioritizing client appointments even on holidays, all of it weighed on her. And yet you frequently take days off, go for walks and shopping with Emma, 
and at first I felt grateful, but gradually I became extremely angry. You deliberately added nuts to the beef stew. You even simmered it long enough to mask the taste. Robert interjected, his usually gentle demeanor now stern. If it were a little nuts, it would cause mild swelling in my mouth or lips if ingested in small amounts. However, a large quantity could trigger an anaphylactic reaction, potentially leading to difficulty breathing. Since childhood, I've been cautious about allergies, and although I've never experienced severe symptoms, I now realize that Robert was even more vigilant about my meals than I was. Why would you do this to Nancy? Not realizing that the beef stew contained nuts and eating it, risking Nancy's safety, and then planning to blame Emma for accidentally adding them. Robert explained politely. Everyone present grasped the malicious intent behind Samantha's actions. I'm sorry, Mom. Michael was the first to apologize deeply. But Robert remained expressionless, calmly pulling out his smartphone. I'll contact the police. As soon as the word police was mentioned, Samantha turned pale, her eyes widening in shock. She seemed to think that adding nuts to the beef stew was a minor matter. Michael tried to grab Robert's phone, but Robert, who usually smiled weakly, now wore an uncharacteristically serious expression, preventing Michael from interfering. This could have led to a serious accident. I believe the police should have a proper conversation about it. After contacting the police, I held Emma tightly for a while. Emma, regretful that she didn't resist more strongly, trembles in my arms. I struggle to find the right words to comfort her. Her small body quivers with emotion. Facing Samantha, who still seems unconvinced, I begin, You know, what hurts me the most isn't the danger I was in due to the nuts. It's that you tried to shift the blame onto young Emma and disrupt our precious family life. Samantha remained silent, staring into the distance. Everything has been laid bare, and her cold eyes fixate on me. Allergies may seem exaggerated to you. After all, nuts sneak into various dishes without notice. But here, where we cook, we must always be mindful of nuts? Exactly. It's not an exaggeration. I've been cautious about what I eat since childhood. Humph. How bothersome. It's probably just some minor skin irritation. Samantha scoffs. As Samantha adjusted her lipstick, Lily suddenly appeared from the adjacent room. With her small, agile body, Lily unexpectedly climbed up Samantha's dress digging her claws into Samantha's neck. Ah! What's happening? Despite the discomfort from Lily's tiny claws, Samantha stood there helplessly. It seemed Lily was fixated on the necklace around Samantha's neck. Lily continued her ascent until she clung desperately to Samantha's body. Then, out of nowhere, Samantha let out a massive sneeze. Startled, Lily clung even harder, refusing to be shaken off. The sneezing fit persisted, and Samantha struggled to disentangle Lily's claws from her clothing. Michael stepped in, scooping Lily up. Meanwhile, Samantha sat down, coughing and wheezing. Tears welled up in her eyes as she pressed her chest, trying to regain her breath. I gently rubbed her back and asked, Are you okay? She nodded after a few deep breaths. I think it's probably a cat allergy. Similar to hay fever symptoms, but have you ever experienced this before? Samantha shook her head slightly, pressing a tissue to her nose, and left the room. Returning from washing her face at the sink, she glared resentfully at Lily while drying her face with a towel. Robert lifted Lily gently, stroking her head. Come to think of it, I'd never seen Robert hold Lily like this before. Despite being so small and adorable, Robert seemed to have been afraid of Lily. But now, he cradled her against his chest as if she were a precious baby. 
Allergies can manifest in various ways, big or small, but they can be incredibly distressing for the person experiencing them. Perhaps you thoughtlessly added nuts to the beef stew, but I want you to fully understand the weight of your actions. Samantha continued to cough intermittently. Soon, two police officers arrived at the house, mediating the dispute. Before discussing the specific crime of knowingly adding nuts to the beef stew, which could cause an allergic reaction, the conversation turned to what kind of response I, the potential victim, am seeking from Samantha. Samantha is my dear son's wife. I don't want to blow things out of proportion, but I do want her to properly reflect on what she should. I conveyed it earnestly. The speech of the seemingly seasoned male police officer was very calm, and Samantha, looking utterly exhausted, gradually revealed the sequence of events and her own feelings. It became evident that Samantha had been attempting to harm me through Emma on a daily basis and had treated Emma harshly when Emma resisted. For Michael, who had been listening nearby, this confession came as a complete surprise, and a few months after this incident, he initiated divorce proceedings. Michael said to me with a look of longing, I dreamed of running a beauty salon with my spouse, just like mom and dad, and it made my heart constrict with empathy. A year has passed since then. Regarding the incident with the nut-infused beef stew, I refrained from turning it into a criminal case or pursuing legal action. However, rumors spread quickly, and it seems Samantha can no longer live in the neighborhood. She has sought refuge with her parents. I don't harbor any resentment or anger towards Samantha. Instead, I genuinely worry about her and occasionally reach out via the smartphone that still receives messages. Those were seemingly trivial words, asking if she was okay or if she needed help. Some might consider it meddling, but I kept in touch. Four months, there was no response. Then one day, I received a brief message from her. I'm sorry. Samantha seemed to be reflecting on her actions and striving for personal growth. I genuinely wanted to forgive her. Since then, Robert and I have welcomed Michael and Emma to live with us in this house. Robert, ever vigilant after the nut-infused beef stew incident, has become even more cautious about what I eat. Having such a protective partner, I feel truly fortunate. I want to create joyful memories for Emma after her difficult experience, so we go out together. At work, I continue to self-improve, aware of my blessings and striving for even greater confidence. Lily, no longer a tiny kitten, stretches out under the living room table. She usually purrs contentedly, but when I prepare a meal, she approaches, sniffing the ingredients, and then leaves. There's probably no deep meaning behind Lily's behavior, but it reminds me that I'm surrounded by many caring beings. Today, I feel oddly happy. How did you find this story? If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to our channel. Until next time.